Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to show you how to make a faux leather wristlet using the Cricut faux leather material. I have always used Cricut products. I love their products. And so I wanted to make a faux leather wristlet. I have made earrings before in the past and then maybe some tiny projects, but nothing really of this great length. And so I actually went on YouTube and I was looking for a video on how to make one. And I realized that there's maybe two or three videos um, showing you how to make it, but they don't explain it to you. So what I figured I would do is I'm going to go ahead and just try it out on my own, and then I can show you guys how to make the wristlet. So that is what I did. I'm going to show you the things that you should and should not do. I tried a couple of different things because I wanted to do a no sew, and that's no bueno. Okay, so with that being said, let's Okay guys, so the first thing you want to do is select the Cricut faux leather that you would like to use. Now there are many types of faux leather out there that you can use. I just prefer to use Cricut and that's what I'm going to use today for this video. So that's why I say that. So here's a piece that I've already cut a couple of things out of. I do earrings. Um, so I have this nice copper piece and then I have this package that I have not even opened yet. Um, uh, yes, I think I have another package of faux leather at the bottom, and I do, okay? I like to keep, um, just a little off topic, I like to keep my paper and my faux leather in these nice plastic bins. I got these at Michael's, that's my local craft store. I honestly wish I could remember exactly how much they cost, but I'll um, link it in the box, the description box below for you. I believe these were like $10 when I got them. And then I'm a teacher, so if you're a teacher, um, I can get 15% off. So check, if you're a teacher, you might be able to get a special discount at your craft store, so just check that out. Um, but yeah, I like it keeps everything like non-dusty, kid-free, <laughs> it's great. Okay, so I'm gonna put that aside. And then there's a couple of different options that I have here. This is um, a maroonish, like brown color. I have a black color. I have this really great vibrant green or blue. So there's really, um, there's many options out there, but Cricut has some good options. Um, these are all like a wood green um, kind of faux leather. So I think I'm gonna stick with one of these. And then I'm going to do a um, wristlet, okay? So I'm trying to think if I want to do like a two-toned or if I want to stick to um, maybe doing just a plain black one. I haven't exactly decided what I want to do. I think I might do a black one because that's so universal and I feel like everyone can kind of relate to having a black wristlet. Um, it just kind of goes with everything for a, a fashion sense point of view. So I think I'm going to choose black, but there are many colors out there. And I will also link the Cricut faux leather in my description box below. That's not sponsored at all, but I just want to show you what I use, um, everything in this video. So just so you are clear, the size of paper or the size of faux leather that I'm using is the 12 inch paper. And then when you, uh, I'm just using the full square and then I cut it in half. So then once you cut it in half, the length will be half of that, which would be six. So if you are um, using scrap paper or you have a longer um, piece of paper and you're not using the Cricut, um, then you want to make sure that you are using the 12 by 12 square and then when you cut it in half It'll be the six inches long that way. Okay I'm gonna cut this in half because I want to have two separate pieces. So I'm pretty much just going to fold it I'm going to make a mark So you can make a mark with um, like if you wanted to flip this you could use one of those like white pencils if you're a sewer um, and then you can mark this up here. Another way of marking it that's just a little bit quicker is you can have your scissors, cut a corner right here, and then I know where my cut mark is. In addition to that, you can also use the Cricut machine and go ahead and put this in your Cricut machine, mark the line that you wanna cut, and the uh, machine will cut it right down there for you too. So there's many different options. It just depends on who you are and what you would like to do. Okay, so something that I like to do is use my cutting board to kind of make that initial mark. So that way when I go to cut, I have a guideline for me. This is great because it lines it up great on the board. I can really see the mark. 
Let me see if I can bring you over. So right there, I can really see where the mark should be. And then I've already given it a little bit of a cut, so you can see that that's a great cut. And I might actually not even need to use my scissors. So that's really fantastic. The more accurate mark you can get, the better. So my board, Fantastic. A nice easy cut and I know that it's even. Um, the board I'm using is from We Are Us. It's the trim and score board. So it looks like this. Um, let's see if I can get that in there. Okay. Um, and again, I can link what I use in the description box below. None of it is sponsored, but I just want you to know what I am using. The Cricut Full Leather can be cut using the We Are Us board. Okay. The next thing I want to do is get my zipper. Um, so it depends really on who you are as a person. Some people would want to match the wristlet with the exact color. Um, so they might want to do black on black. I have several colors here. Um, I'm not someone that is a perfectionist necessarily, so I don't really mind if something was a different color. Like, I'm almost even crazy enough to go purple, but I think I'm going to stick with more of the um, natural color um, just to kind of give that um, neutral sense. Let's see. I also have a white color. Hmm. I think I actually might go white because black and white is great. And then when I'm thinking about my design for later, that actually might go really well as well. So I go ahead and put my zippers back in this container and I'll put this to the side. Okay, so when I'm lining up my two pieces with my zipper, I want to make sure that the pieces that I want to use are um, able to go over it. So I can figure out how long I want my zipper to be and how much I'm going to need to cut off. I also want to show you the heat and bond that I use. You can buy this at any craft store. Um, I have the heat and bond ultra hold, no sew, um, but you can get the one that sews as well. This one I just find it's pretty easy. Now the zipper part was able to be Heat, I, I was able to use the heat and bond fine for the zipper. I would recommend that it's just way easier in my opinion. Um, it's machine washable, um, but I just felt like the heat and bond for the zipper worked out well. It's just for the rest of the faux leather itself. Um, I did not, I do not recommend doing a no sew for the faux leather. In my opinion, it did not work very well. It ended up coming apart pretty quickly. Um, so just be mindful of that. And what you do is this comes in. Um, a big huge piece of paper so what I did is I cut out strips and then I measured it with my zipper I believe I have one in here that I can show you an example so you can take your zipper um, cut out the length of the heat and bond that you want put it right on the edge and what you actually want to do I should be showing you is the paper side down and all the instructions are on here as well so you can read them but you can take it paper side down. Once you have your actual strip, you take your heating source and you press it for about three seconds down the line just like this. And then when you're done, you end up peeling this paper off and then that will reveal the shiny side, which is when you then would take your faux leather piece and you're going to place it right over the top of that heat and bond like this. And you want to go ahead and press down to attach the full leather to the heat and bond. Now, this material was actually able to hold up pretty well. I did go over the iron with it. But in order to protect your paper even better, you could use parchment paper. And that will um, be a, just a light coat so you don't have to burn the leather. But honestly, if you're going the three seconds down, you should be fine. Um, you can also make sure even better to flip it over like this and then you can go over on this side with it and then you're not really hitting the paper as much either. So those are two, two different ways that you can do it. Um, but like I said, I wanted to do the trial and error for you so I did go over the material part to see if it would do anything and honestly I was able to do it pretty well because you're only holding it down for three seconds anyways. 
The important thing that you want to make sure is that when you are ironing, um, it even says on here for this particular kind is no steam is required. So you don't need the steam. It actually makes um, a mess. I did, of course, test this out and I did have it. So it was really steamy and hot to see if that was any better at all. And it actually just makes water come out because it's steam and it's too hot so you don't need the steam on make sure you put your iron on like a low setting like I did medium to low setting so I think mine was on four um so that's just also um a helpful helpful hint for you for that as well okay so something that's important to know is that once your faux leather is attached to the zipper like this on both sides you want to make sure before you do any sewing that you open this zipper and so it is loose like this and then when you flip it over you want to be sewing it so that it should look like the zipper on top and you're sewing it with this side um, the the non desirable side that's how you want to sew it across and make sure that that zipper is open if you if the zipper is closed when you go to inside it out, you won't be able to do that because you will have sewn it shut. So make sure that the zipper stays open and that you sew on this side so that way on this next part I'm about to show you, you'll be able to pull it through. So like I mentioned, honestly, the heat and bond is okay for the zipper, but it doesn't really hold up the rest of the faux leather as well as I would like it to. I also, just for the kicks, decided to hot glue just to see what it would do mm -mm, not the way to go for sure so i wanted to test out all those things for you so you didn't have to go through that kind of frustration and figuring it all out that's the whole point of having a video right so what i did is i hand sewed the edges of my wristlet um you can also use a sewing machine if that is something that you are good at or interested in. I personally don't mind watching Netflix and sewing around the edges on my own. Um, I'm still working on becoming a master at my sewing machine. <laughs> Again, make sure you keep that zipper open, otherwise you won't be able to do this part. Um, go ahead and you have to inside it out. Yay, I found the end of my zipper, which is always promising. And then again, like you can just keep manipulating it until it gets to where you want it to be. And there we go. There's the bottom. And then once I have, oh, I still have some of my heat and bond left over. I can just peel that off. Um, it was from when I first originally tried to do just a heat and bond, but again, sewing is the best option for your full leather wristlet. Now I can go ahead and show you the inside. That's the great part is it can be as messy as you need it to be on the inside from trial and error. It doesn't matter because all of that is gonna be on the inside and no one will see it. So there we go. I've got my wristlet. Go ahead and zip. And now the fun part is I can design this and use my Cricut iron-on material and put a fun design on. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you learned something new. And if you have something that you could share with me, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to see your feedback or if you actually completed the project, I'd love to see a picture of it. There's nothing better than seeing and hearing from your supporters, so thank you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. Don't forget when you subscribe, hit the bell next to it and that will alert you when I post a new video every Tuesday. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and I'll see you in the next one.